Hello and welcome. We're going to solve this problem together. But first, pause the video and try it on your own. All right, let's start by reading the question together. It says, which equation represents a linear function? Now, this word linear, just take a look at it for a moment. Linear, I'm going to write it out. Linear, I'm going to color code it in a way that kind of highlights a key idea. Um, I'm not highlighting the R in linear, I'm highlighting the line, right? Linear, the word linear refers to something that when you graph it, you get a line. So it could be an equation, it could be in the form of some points, it could be in any, any different form, but the idea is if you graph it, you get a line. Also, the reason you get a line is because it has a constant rate of change, or you might say a constant slope. Um, here we want an equation that represents a linear function, and none of these qualify except for d. And the way I was able to tell so quickly is because I know that here, this last one, is in the form y equals mx plus b. So y equals negative two-thirds x minus one-half is in the form mx plus b, where m is the slope. So the slope's constant. It's always negative two-thirds. And uh, this number right here is usually referred to as b in mx plus b form. And b refers to the y-intercept, the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. Um, so I was able to identify it so quickly. I knew the structure, mx plus b. I knew that the slope right here, 2 thirds, is just some constant number. And I also recognized that um, x, our input, is just a variable with a power of 1. If you have some other power involved, it's no longer linear. So, for example, in B, I see x is squared. So I know that's going to affect the rate of change. Um, and I know C has this cubed root right here. And the cubed root of x plus 1 messes with the value of the inputs in a nonlinear way. If x is in your denominator, this can be written as 4 times x to the negative 1 plus 1. Because x to the negative 1, that literally equals as a definition, 1 divided by x. And 4 divided by x, right, really equals 4 times 1 over x, or 4 times x to the negative first, which I got right here, plus the 1. And I'm showing this because here the exponent on x is just negative 1. It's not 1, so it's not linear. Now, if that doesn't work for you, I thought you might like to see the graph, so I'll pull up GeoGebra. Let's see how these look, and then we'll talk about it in a third way. y equals 4 divided by x plus 1. You can see this cool graph that we get here, right? Look at the curvature. It's not linear. Then if we, I think y equals x squared is next. Um, if we look at that, x squared plus 2. So this is going to be what's called a, a parabola, um, and then shift the two units up. So the y-intercept here, the y-intercept, or the minimum of this parabola, is at 2. You see the shape of the parabola. It's really quite beautiful. And then y equals the cubed root. This means the cubed root, it's kind of like square root, uh, but for example, if you have um, 8, and I said, what's the cubed root of 8, right? That would be 2, because 2 multiplied 3 times is 8. It's a, a number multiplied 3 times, it gets you 8. So here we want the cubed root of x plus 1, which is a, a fun concept. So y equals x plus 1 to the, and I need parentheses here, 1 third power. It's to the 1 third power that's the cube root, just like square root's half power. This is a pretty looking function, right? Zooms in and zooms down and stops. And then you want to think about why it does not continue. It's kind of important. Uh, but it's something I'm not going to get into here. And then negative 2 thirds x minus 1 half. So y equals negative 2 thirds x minus 1 half. Here we can see that's our linear function. So again, um, you can graph these things if you want. Of course, it might take a while, and there's no, there's no space provided for this question. Um, but you can see that the graphs support the idea of the only linear function was the last one on the list. Now, if, if you don't like any of these techniques, the last one I suggest is just to make a table for a function you're not sure about. So for example, let's say I wasn't sure about A, and I'm like, ah, is this linear? What I would do is I'd make a table of x's and y's. In this case, y equals 4 divided by x plus 1. And all I would do is plug in a couple of x values to see what's going to happen. So first of all, I plug in 0. 4 divided by 0, that's undefined. So we can't even look at that. That makes me suspicious that this is not linear. But then if I plug in 1, I get 4 divided by 1 
plus 1. So that's 4 um, plus 1, which is 5. Then I plug in 2. 4 divided by 2 plus 1 is 2 plus 1, which is 3. And then I plug in 3. 4 divided by 3 plus 1 is, well, 4, <coughs> four thirds plus 1 is 4 thirds plus 3 thirds, or 7 thirds. And that's equal to 2 and a third. Right? And what we're looking for is a constant rate of change, constant slope. And here we can see we don't have it. As we go from 1 to 2, our rate of change is minus 2. Right? And so far, it's OK, as long as we go up 1 and then down 2 again. But here we just go down 2 thirds. So that rate of change is changing already. It's nonlinear. All right, I hope this helps.